Hello everyone, we're with the new Brush Sauce Challenge. I'm here with Adam Duff. How you doing? And the theme this month is the Battle Above. And for those of you that don't know, put your name in the file when you post it into the Brush Sauce uh, event section. That way I don't have to rename or add your names to the files and we know who we're talking about. So that's just a quick note. Um, let me think of, I'm think of anything off the top of my head now. No, we'll just kind of get in and we'll be trying to keep these to about three minutes a piece. So we might cut off each other to try to keep this on a timely manner and, and yeah. keep the flow going and we'll go, you know, kind of <laughs> clockwise or, yeah, left to right, top to bottom. Yeah. <laughs> that works. So we're going to start here with you, Toby. Mr. Toby. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I oh, like I like the narrative in this piece. Uh, yeah. He's like summoning it from a book, and it, it's at, at a subtle bit of this kind of meta level. Yeah. And yeah. I also like the um, the unity with variety in terms of the color scheme. There's like the magentas, the the greens, the yellows. It's very subtle in the background. I, I like, I, but it's it's still like a little busy though in terms of texture. I think. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, controlling those textures, right? Yeah. You want to make sure that you're not drawing it, it, your eye everywhere. You want to draw your eye to where it's important the most, right? Yeah, it, it feels a little too clumsy and random. Yeah. In, in terms of that, like it, like the the dinosaur or the dragon looks cool, but he, but he's also eating sharks. So this is this is interesting. Yeah, that's <laughs> Toby, man. He he doesn't hold back when it comes. I didn't. To I book. didn't. I didn't think like. See, there's something going on here because he's like chilling on the side of the book. He's summoning it, right? Yeah. You can see it. Fighting the connection. flying sharks. I, I like the ideas. Yeah. It's... Toby, to me, is probably... One, he's a big inspiration to me when it comes to visual storytelling. He's very strong at that. I think, like Tyler's saying, it's... Uh, I even... Chris Oatley even mentions this at one point. Uh, beware the texture monster, right? Yeah, that's a You don't want a texture everywhere it. because then, it, then you're basically telling your audience, look everywhere. Everything's important. And you don't want to do that. You want to keep it focused in a specific yeah, I ran spot. one surface blur on it that that helped a lot yeah and it's like taking these even and breaking them down a bit further so yeah. that it's not kind of competing with the statement you're trying to make uh you know in the uh foreground yeah and just blurring some of that out simplifying that up and then you could focus a few areas like this like the contrast behind the you know the head that that's great and then maybe even like Again, we're losing a little bit of depth right here with, with this character and, um, you know, this creature here. So you can come in, bring a little bit of that atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice. And again, we're losing a lot. We're even losing, like, I don't know what's happening in the foreground here. Like, this is all coming off. Having it read as a shape is good, but then but you're also kind of compromising the... Uh, you know, what, are you, what are you, you're compromising how flat and the, the flatness and the depth of it as well. So you know what I'm thinking too? Uh, to make some kind of, although you have the pose, the pose connection between what he's summoning in the book and the actual beast itself is good. Um, I would be tempted to do something because you have that lovely yellow color that you used for the summoning. Um, bring that almost, I was. I would imagine almost like transitioning from that yellow to the beast itself to show that it's actually, yeah. that's what's being summoned. The and that connection, right? At, to fix this problem, what I'm doing is I'm taking a really desaturated yellow and adding the top form to like the cloak. Yeah, and that the shoulder, the, and this by comparison comes off a lot cooler in temperature, and it and it balances all the warms that you have on, and it's setting up. You can see it's setting up the differences. Yeah, and uh, so do that and do that to the back, you know, of the character here to, to really sell that. But time's up. We're moving on. It's a great job. Beautiful, Toby. Beautiful work. Yeah. All right. Who do we got next? Ooh, space shot. Space shot, and who's who's the uh, who's the wonderful artist on this piece? Let me check that out. See, I actually didn't. I was going so fast. We'll give you credit. It's <laughs> the name is not there because it's called Space. Uh, okay. We'll look it up yeah. after. I'm sorry. Listen, put your name in the this... put, put your name in the title if you can. Yeah. You know, that, you know who, Maybe it's the signature. No. You'll never anyway, get credit for it, right? Space. Really ambitious. I like like this is like a woman on a starship, right? That and yeah. there's like a battle above, like you know, outside. Yeah. There's a ton of work put into this. Piece. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, I'll tell you something that's jumping out at me. Uh, value structure. I think Tyler would probably agree yeah. with this. The, you, you want to be careful with your lights and darks. Like if you look at the darkest darks on her dress and her hair, 
next to the space behind her, it's the same value. If so we, immediately flatten your brain says they're on the same plane, and that can flatten the image. If we blow this to like thumbnail size, really tiny, right? We, we just see like a wall of black. Yeah. And even though it's space, there's ways to add depth. And yeah. I actually saw this, and I, I just I think I found a great example like ahead of time. Something kind of similar, and that was from this piece from and Andrea Wallen. And it, just to show you how you can use light and shadow and, and even, you know, how you can do various flare effects to build yeah. up the dimensions in this. And this is on Pinterest. And in yeah. terms of referencing, I saved this from his site once. And what Pinterest does um, is it finds lots of images that are fairly similar uh -huh. So now all of a sudden, just by finding one halfway decent image for a reference, I have basically like a sea of them. Like yeah. any of these, you know, could be <laughs> lit. You know, value yeah. oh, value structure wise has a very very similar tone or feel yeah. to your image. Like like these guys here even. I mean, that's finding a bunch of videos. I don't know why. <laughs> but like I was looking at the thumbnail there and see like if you want to light the character like you did, that's how you can do it. And then you have blue in the background instead of black. Yeah, like you tone it, and like another way, another great example here is having atmosphere, having the front light from the left, same as in your image, right here. But then like getting rid of that black and pulling in some of that atmosphere blue, can really tone things well. I mean, yeah, I maybe didn't find as many good references as I thought, but this is the sort of thing you, you know, movie stills would probably be your best friend. Um, I have a question for you, Tyler. Actually, or I would ideally love to ask the artist directly, but um, but there we see the ships off in the distance, right? We see all those ships that are coming into in yeah. the camera. There's that one thing that's peeking out from behind her back, and it's hard to tell with the design of it if it's yeah. a ship or a hair or a bow or something like that. But that's uh, see, even like killing probably. a lot of that like this, and then if you were to select a character, try to do this like five yeah, seconds. there you go, and bring her back. Yeah. Filling that up and adding your lens, you know, making giving it that real kind of sci-fi yeah, pop, see? you know, adding this all in, it's like got to darken this up tenfold uh, with the, you know, in terms of contrast. Yeah, uh, and also like like Toby as well. Be careful with your textures. You have a heavy texture all over the place. Be careful with that, especially those darken. those things off in the distance. We shouldn't be able to see that level of detail. Yeah, on. this is confusing. Right? Because, again, the value structure, it looks, I mean, I can tell you, it looks like you're going for a ship in the background, but it looks like an extension of, like, her shoulder or something like yeah. that. So just yeah. watch that. Yeah. But just by doing what Tyler did with the light and layer there, you immediately yeah. create a nice And sense careful of... not to overexpose your highlights, which is very clear here. So my yeah. recommendation for you is certainly to go get lots of movie stills from, like, J.J. Abrams movies even. Yeah. <laughs> Star Trek. Watch Star Trek. See how they light guys on vessels or even, what is it called, um... I gotta move on, but uh, that show with the the robots and the Cylons. What the heck's the name of uh, Battlestar Galactica? Ah, right, right. Okay, the battle above from Alyssa. I was gonna say I robots. <laughs> yeah. like, no, Adam, that's not the same. Thing. There's a lot of cool things Ooh, going on here. It's a lot going on here. Holy smokes! I think. Wow. I mean, look at this. We have this going on. This is great, and then we have this. Like, this is a, a like the best one of the best setups I've seen for an image, particularly yeah. of this theme. Like, yeah, good against you. But I think okay. wow. there's a few compositional elements that we have going on. Color aside, do, do you agree the color needs some tweaking, Adam? Um, I think, well, what, what he's got going on on the, on the right and left, notice uh, it's, it, it's not unless we zoom in that we're going to be able to see that incredible amount of detail that you put in on these armies, especially on the right, because you have a nice use of contrast there with your colors. It actually separates each layer. Yeah. On the left, you're missing that. And I was sitting there at first glance, and I'm like, oh, my God, there's so much work there that we're missing. And that's such a shame because it's so beautifully done. Um, but if you come in close, I would create some kind of a visual separation between all these different layers of, of yeah, armor. Yeah, really simplify things. But I, I made a note that since it's already a bit of an asymmetrical composition with the characters here and stuff, what I would do actually is maybe like blow up these and put it into the foreground a little bit more. Yeah, yeah bump them up a bit. Just a bit. Paste. I want to copy and paste this. Yeah, you don't want to lose the grandeur of yeah. the piece, you know, and the scale. Bringing them up, you know, powerful. same setup, but then what I drew originally was just like and symmetrical compositions are all fine, but they're usually most, you know, mo more times than not, not as strong as an asymmetrical composition. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and like again, like dividing it right in half, and then th these clusters are exactly like the same size, which is, creates an even balance. And they make an interesting composition. We want to, you know, make a balanced composition, but have it be uneven in terms of the objects yeah. and placement. So even taking, uh, you know, like a lot of these elements and adding more dimension to it. Yeah. It might maybe a way to to remedy that. So like transform. This is just a quick mock up of yeah. how to do it. But you know, make one side clearly more dominating. You know what? And it, with respect to that, if you're going to make one side more dominating than the other, think about the colors you're using too. You've got a lot of striking contrast on the evil side, mm -hmm. um, but which is you. But you've more got monochromatic. more monochromatic side on the left, right? So what you can do to counterbalance that is like do the opposite of what Tyler just did, it, where you'd scale the good guys versus the bad guys. Or if you're going to scale the bad guys, make sure the good guys are visually a little bit more powerful with their colors. Bring in some complementary colors or something like that to make it, you know, the power of good. Right? Yes, like this. It's a Celestia style type of idea. Yeah. Just, you know, visually like have one more and then just kind yeah. of over to and then you could add a value structure to this. But aside from the composition, what the idea of those is the strongest point. The colors are competing a lot. It's very evenly uh, vivid. And yeah. Like, you know, if we take the whole thing, uh, again, I'll copy and paste this if we desaturate it. Oh, yeah. I, I just had a brain fart. I'm sorry. I want to duplicate the layer. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of beautiful details. Too much going, yeah, too much going on in my head right now. And then mm -hmm. just scaling scaling it back and then adding saturation you know in in key kind of key kind of places like just yeah. on the rims and the highlights yeah. and then yeah. softening up some of this de keep it really simple like you have that's great and then just save yeah. some of your detail for like here but then these two are still mirroring each other so ultimately what you want to do is probably you know bring this whole part to like somewhere else like on a different axis you know, and maybe having him coming not quite straight at us, but maybe like slight three quarter. Right. Like I know I just moved that, and it's kind of ugly. But having like a little bit more dimension in this guy. It's moving your eye diagonally, and it's, and it's coming speed. at us. Or dynamic eye movement, yeah. That's... And having that kind of going at him, you know, yeah. if this is the yeah. horse. Like you know, uh, you know what this actually making me think of is the um, which call it that famous Michelangelo painting. Yes. It's Chapel, the one of uh, Jesus and uh, and but this what? is a great idea, and I, and I love a lot of the subtlety right. in it. <laughs> Jesus and what's his face is like, I just pissed a lot of people off saying that. All right, yeah. Adrian, what you got going on here? Sorry, cool. we're trying to move things on. Yeah, 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 yeah. This oh. is epic. Look at the look, again, the detail. Jesus, you guys work hard on these things. Yeah, folks. And again, with the detail, where the color balance still yeah. evenly saturated, and it's. It's, it's like a big punch in the face. Like we want to yeah. maybe give a guy the one two, so it's not all at once. You know, yeah. <laughs> you, you set you set him up. Left I'll left knock him right. down. <laughs> Other than coming in with a hard right, hard left, hard left foot, hard right. You know, like you're you're kicking everybody in the teeth with too much saturation, and you don't want to do. You lose the impact when you do that. You want to so, balance that with something a little bit more toned down. If I type in Frank Frazetta color palettes, he's a great example to kind of show you because his stuff is also very vivid and striking. But yeah. it's it's either a a bit more monochromatic, yeah, or it's like you know it's actually scaled back in enough places where we still have all the like there's not that bright you know Look yellow that blast soft color yeah you see how toned down a lot of those colors are but he's got a, that little strike of color where he wants you to look again I, right here that oh, strike this is this is a lot more muted than it than it than it could appear it's more yeah. like way down here but it, and, and by having that muted it it makes the fire more vibrant and powerful yeah. Same thing with this tiger painting here. This is yep. the only bit that's really saturated. I mean, this is yellow, but it's much more, um, you know, desaturated. So really, that's like one of the biggest things we could talk about this week. And again, this is like a great example, right? If we're looking at this in terms of the color balance. Yeah, he's very selective with where he where he punches in those saturations. This is all dark. It's muted and it's subdued. I'd say about seventy percent of the image is. Well, yeah. the shoulder you know the part of the girl and even the sky like that's where we have like the most uh punch in color and yeah. that's what you kind of want to aim for yeah but yeah i thought of him adam I, would you agree like he if you're gonna do bold color choices like yeah 
he's a great kind of reference. And, you know, Boris well, Vallejo. You know how I feel about Frazetta, right? So yes. you, you use him as a reference, you're always going to get a yes from me. <laughs> and balancing you know, your colors. So, with you all the time. again, you can, you can stack, you can think of, uh, did I forget to set the timer? Okay, I did. Anyway, you could think of uh, a color balance like we can the composition itself. So we have our, our scale, we have our fulcrum. A, a yellow, a, a pure desaturated yellow like this is going to come off as uh, where is it? something, it's going to visually weigh a lot. Yeah. Some, anything like this saturated like that or particularly a red, these and colors, or, yeah, the it's hot. going to weigh a tremendous amount. And you have to counterbalance that by having lots of... Uh, you know, colors that are more muted yeah. and, and subdued even. So again, changing these up a bit. And, you know, at, but it, having a lot of variety of the subtle colors you it's going to make a statement against yeah. how, like how much real estate something like this is going to, you know, take up. So it's ult ultimately what you want to do is to like cut that back yeah. <laughs> and just use that like a little bit and then yeah. have all the, the kind of muted colors like these take up, you know, most of the painting. Yeah. And then use and that to counterbalance those. The fact that you have a scene where so much of it is an extremely aggressive warm color to your audience, what it's going to do is instead of making it striking and beautiful, it's going to make people, it's going to push people away because it's overwhelming, right? Yeah. So you don't want to overwhelm people with, with the, that much of a warm tone. You want people to stay in your piece and enjoy it. You don't want people to go, oof, that's too much to move away. Mm -hmm. Right? I just moved you into the picture plane because you, you got a nice mug to look at, Adam. I do <laughs> on the Skype oh, call. That's so you're in your spot. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, yeah. Other than that, like I like the 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 kind of sci-fi Reaper vibe you have going here. Yeah. And the idea itself is very cool. These are kind of kissing the edge again compositionally. Your ellipses are. You want to cut them off, or make them completely separate. Same thing with the ship, you know, like the, be careful with tangents. And if you're not sure what tangents are, look them up online. Uh, just tangents in art. And you don't want things kissing each other that are on the foreground, background, right? Mm -hmm. You want to create separation or an overlap. Just be careful with that because that'll mess with your depth. And have them, have them be completely separate from it or you see half of it. No, yeah. like, I'm going to rest just on the edge and make friends. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's really cool. Um, probably want to work on the design a little bit more of some of these specifics like uh, i you know i just don't know that the function or you know, the ship i don't know the ship design is my least probably favorite part of the whole scene i like the characters i like this weapon i like this building but now that ship is just rubbing me the wrong way yeah but again it, if you want to get it you have a nice two-point kind of perspective on a lot of these buildings you probably want to carry that through with this main building as well and again make this probably a little bit more off center yeah but overall great job great job man great job all right, Adrian. Okay, now we got. Uh, 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 I'm, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, wait. I think it's it's. Uh, is this really? So, uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, this is one of the best illustrated concepts we have of the lot. Um, definitely a different take. Look like at we that. Get the, yeah. This, <laughs> this like was it like an ogre or a troll attacking them with like some machine guns and swords from that's above <laughs> in the face man foot in the face that that's saying something right and there. you it's have a lizardy feel to it too. and folks this is a great idea of the value structure we were talking about um and even color balance right we only have the muted saturation like right here yeah and that that's work and it works perfectly it's subdued i may even i'd even consider playing that up maybe slightly bit you know a bit more adding a you know a little bit more vividness to it in places because you did it so in a, in a subdued fashion i think yeah you know what i think would make a big would make a big change in this uh be careful also with redundancies with your color it's clear you had a nice controlled color palette you have those mm -hmm. those uh uh magentas in the background with a little bit more of a cool down color the violets a bit of an analogous kind of color scheme you got going on but with that said you don't want to be too redundant with your colors the color of the of of the clothing Mm -hmm. And the color of the background are too close. So visually, the actual, the actual yeah. hue value, the actual um, tonal values that you're dealing with are too close. Um, vary up that magenta. Make it a little cooler, a little warmer. So Play just, around with the color so you can create that separation. Create if I just quickly clarity. kind of select the sky, which I'm attempting to do, with we can just slightly alter that, and it will change the whole impact, I think, of your image. That is the most spectacularly precise selection I've ever seen, Tyler. I don't know how you do it. 
Wow. I train at this like five hours a day making quick selections. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, but you know, it's like the karate masters. They punch the same log a thousand times like a day. Like I just make selections. That's all I do. I'm telling you, man, that's, that's scary. That's scary. So if we go to hue saturation, we can tweak this. <laughs> Everything in the background, you know. Yeah, I took it you out. just want to push it away or do the select the clothing, just so it's like a different I'll hue. Back the saturation of it too. See what that does. That'll help. Cool it down a bit. Yeah. Or you know, even even better, we'll probably be going to levels. Yeah. And then just you know, dumping in certain amounts of red or taking some out, but just playing with them to make it you know a different appeal. Yeah. And this is not the. You know, See, if you're going to go more magenta, then you could lean more toward the yellow and oranges like in the sky. Yeah. And then have that clear distinguish. My, my other thing that I wasn't crazy about was just the shape of the hair. It's it's like I, it, it confused me at first because I didn't realize it was hair. It's it's very – I don't know. Like I think it would be – what it's do you like think, a bit of volume where we should throw a little bit of lighting on that so that it's not just a black form, especially that size of a black form. It's, yeah, like you want to you you want to yeah. get that motion in it, right? That you do have that that idea correct, like for Zeta, um, but it's just I don't know, I, I'm not gonna nail this first try, but like you want to, it's just too graphic, yeah, and it's it's too even, and I don't know you want to you want it to get that wild feel. You can get it, and that's how you you do that's how you do show the contrast. But I don't know, it's just. Yeah, a little too much. Should be loose, right? You wanna you wanna loosen up hair. Play you with the graphic read of that hair. You know, get it's not gelled. Yeah, exactly. Just a bit, you know. And my mine's not, mine's not like a great example of that. But you know, just making it feel a little bit more natural. Yeah. Bringing that up a little. And bit. be careful too. The way you do hair flow, the way Tyler's doing it right now is more hair that's flowing in the air with yeah. Graph but the way you had the flow is a little bit too much like as if it was underwater, like that scene from 300 with the oracles, mm -hmm. right? Where she, her hair's kind of doing this. That's more underwater flowing, so be careful with that. Yeah, I generally just go back, and then I then I go make a layer, and I kind of sculpt how yeah. how it should look, you know, various <laughs> various ways. Her hair was very big, and I don't want to lose that, but, you know, just play with the shapes. Uh, very important, too. I just, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Tyler, but one important thing to mention here is always get up and do the pose yourself if you can, okay, or look it up, because you'll see, immediately start to notice that there's certain things, all this beautiful work put into rendering out the anatomy, mm -hmm. yet the pose is physically awkward and maybe even impossible. Like the way the leg is open like that and the upper torso straight yeah. but the legs off to the side. I don't know how possible that is in the human body and if it would naturally happen. So make sure to pose that yourself in front of a mirror or something, right? But awesome job though. It's, yeah, it's very well nice. illustrated. Good value structure. All right. We have – I open this and I don't see the names. Uh, Putman. Uh, Putman. Awesome. So as I was saying, this is like a super great setup for an image. Uh, you got a focal uh, – but we have too much – my first initial read with it is too much contrast, Adam. What do you feel? Like, yeah. again, we have focal point, focal point, but then we have the same amount of contrast here, here, yeah. here, 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 here. here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not necessary in real life, it's not necessarily tech, technically inaccurate to have contrast like this. Yeah, this is... Um, but you have to cheat in art. You have yes. to you have to create an illusion of depth. It's not about realism, it's about believability. And you have to put you have to exaggerate depth so that we can feel it. Otherwise, it flattens the image. We we want to take right? like the six or whatever circles I drew, narrow it down to one primary one with maybe yeah. like a secondary and then maybe like a, even a little guy where that contrast is. So yeah. we if you're if this is your flow, right? We're kind of going here in a nice yeah. kind of circular flow maybe out here. You want to, you know, again make keep, uh, keep that going but you know also get rid of the distractions along the way yeah but this is like a great resting point but again what we have here compositionally for dividing this in two this is taking up about the same amount of space as this visually in terms of weight they're about the same size yeah. the, the two massive masses and they're on each side of that so you want to watch yeah. out for that yeah uh, something Tyler mentioned earlier before when we were checking out the images before we started recording is if you're going to put a dragon in the foreground and really create a strong focal point, uh, give him movement, bring him to life. The fact that he's sitting there static is visually unsatisfying to people who are really nerding out over all this gorgeous detail and yeah. have a strong focal point. Right? And a great example 
of this actually was you know a anton images here like if yeah. you had this guy coming at this castle like this you know if, if i just take this for a moment and flip it um you know and we put that guy like right there now we're getting the action and, and the set piece and the moment of this the fact that he's just kind of chilling on a rock looking at his buddies do all the work yeah. is, is kind of taking away from the impact of the image you want, yeah you want to satisfy people with what he's doing you don't even then you could just have him with his wings open or something active so that we go, we're rewarded for looking there because you gave us every reason to look there. Now reward us for doing that by giving us something cool to look yeah. at. Yep. And again, you could really play up the, yeah, look at that. the light yeah. and the shadow on that. And then, uh, I know my selection skills are at its finest again, and then soften up the detail them. on, on some of these other places. Yeah. Like that's, that's a great cool. kind of transition you have there. But again, even with this, you can minimize it tenfold. If we just take, yeah. uh, you know darken for instance and we just if, if this light is coming up here you'd see like a nice cast shadow of that yeah. maybe yeah. just see just a little bit of it but connect connecting it like that is like a good way and it minimizes the overall contrast and again you would old if this is your final payoff you probably just want the dragon coming in a little bit lower not so they're on uh perfectly even kind of playing fields right because if we draw this that horizon line in we have this resting at the top we have this on it and we have this guy which creates a very kind of boring rhythm for the image you want when you were thinking about images and compositions in our scenes we want something kind of big right here maybe something tinier up here maybe something a different size you know right here or yeah. bigger right here it's creating an interesting rhythm and flow yeah. with on yeah. our composition that you want to be aiming for yeah so again, and I know this is probably a bit of a rush thing, but then like just cleaning up a lot of this extra stuff too, and I'm sure for you it was a time thing, but you know, simplifying some of the clouds a bit, and then you know, fixing the texture and the consistency around throughout a lot of this. Yeah. But overall, great job, and I love your color beautifully scheme and painted. setup. Yeah, beautifully painted. Like I, just your whole painterly approach, and it's beautiful. It visually beautiful piece, absolutely. All right, Anton. What have we got next? Talking about your piece now. Movement! We've got lots of it. Yes. This has movement and it perfectly kind of captures the theme in terms of like a battle. This is like a super awesome kind of chaotic scene. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. It's two focal points. And they're you know, different sizes, different parts of the composition. This is a bit of a tangent for me though, Adam. This The way that this is kind of perfectly mirroring that and a little bit... Really close, yeah. Really a little too close. Maybe I would think the, this wing would be better if, if, you, if you move the whole thing or if you had it kind of spread out a little bit more like that. Yeah. Oh, more... yeah. And look at how that cr nicely frames the castle in the background. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Consider yeah. that. Yeah. That big, that, that's actually a very, it's something I didn't even spot intuitively, but that wing, that strong wing diagonally cutting across the yeah. middle, actually a bit of a divide, right? And yeah. you don't want to divide, you want to encompass. You want to bring it around rather than block it because your eye has a tendency to stop there. You don't want to do that. And again, right? you have great contrast here and here. So this is another point of I think it's you know arbitrary contrast. You can just minimize that just a bit. Mm -hmm. A little too yeah. white, a little too comfortable back there. So just take it and and you know tone it down through whatever kind of means. And then we can keep the focus where the business is. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, other than that, what we were talking about before was that um, I liked your 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 composition overall and, and your idea and theme, but the execution is a little bit too rough in a lot of places. Especially where, where it needs to be, where, especially where we're, we're craving information, like where the character's sitting, like the rider on top of the bird. Mm -hmm. We want to see that rider and be able to define it well. Right there, it look, just looks kind of like a... Yeah. It's more like a wispy shape. It's hard to read. So you'd, you'd want to you'd wanna finish that off, right? If you confided it's, it wasn't a time, time issue. Yeah. This Hold is up. a great example of like the level of detail and finish you, you want to probably aim for in terms of something like that. I'm not going to map this guy. Um, <laughs> he gonna, has a very similar image. Like stuff like this, right? Where we have a rider in the foreground. You got to play that up tenfold and, <laughs> you know, really get in there and articulate all the textures, the details, and the forms. I, and again, another example, like you're much more kind of attuned to your character, is the just the level of polish in, in an image like this is what you want to kind of get your things at, you know, your paintings or your illustrations, and that's perfectly, you know, that's edge, that's good edge control, and that's form and that's lighting consistency. It's also a good lesson in the power of the human butt. 
Yes, I mean, he, he, he likes to showcase his well, assets. I didn't notice the big dragon in the back because I have the, we had this hot, bright highlight shining right on her butt, you know. And I'm sitting there going, you know, I mean, you don't even notice the dragon before you. If, if you want to look up more of his imagery, though, it, it 6K <laughs> art. He has a YouTube channel with like a two-hour video of him, I think, painting this one. One of these images he paints it. I don't think there's commentary, but he you can at least watch him paint it to give you like a better idea. But overall, great job. Yeah, very nicely done, I must say. I, John. I 6K R2. Ah, John Lau, look at this. Beloved John Lau, in all of his heavenly glory. Oh, uh, this is epic and well rendered. Um, I'm not sure what's happening down here, but it's giving me the feels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, it's as far as the subject is concerned, like what he's battling, it's kind of like I can see that it's good prevailing over this evil landscape. The landscape itself is the bad guy. Yeah. And that's how I'm reading this. And the first thing I did here, just a quick, because it's an easy fix, is soften some of your lassoed edges up back here. Yeah. So They're out of focus. We don't need to see them crisp and sharp. And I do like how you have, you know, this magenta playing from the back of here. And I actually think adding just a teeny bit more in here to just hint at these forms right adam because in the shadows we hint yep. at the we hint at the forms how do you say it oh crap i forgot brain fart <laughs> you know what i'm saying though right i can't think on the just block. a little bit I have of that to take a lot of planning to think <laughs> just a little bit though yeah that helped a lot um, you know what i'm thinking too if it's good again it's kind of another one it's the duality right a lot of people went with the duality of good and evil and in this, like like Tyler had mentioned before about balancing your your tones, balancing your your color temperatures, you have a real heavy use of red, a, a lot yeah. of warmth in this, and you've got the heavenly angelic warrior creature flying down. I would have him occupy a cooler part of the scene and have more of that blue light filter through to show we're looking at opposite diagonals, cool and warm, right? And that way you're also not going to have too much. Mm -hmm. uh, overpowering use of of warm tones. I gotta yeah. say though, man, this piece is really nice. I love the rendering in this. I love the way you polish this up. Adam, you're now we can just nitpick this because we talked a lot yes. about the bigger issues. Yeah. Um, there are a few things. I he for me just feels like I, I saw his original sketch for this and I actually liked it a lot more. He feels yeah. like he's just like a little bit too unnaturally hunched over looking at this. Yeah, I mean, am I nitpicking that too much? Or... Neck. It doesn't feel like that natural. I think we're missing a bit of a. Ne the pauldrons are a little bit too high up. Like if we were actually to remove the pauldrons, well, I would imagine the pauldrons came up close to the face. I would just beef it because, up too. Because those arms would need to come low. Yeah, it feels like we need to take the, the too paper thin of armor. You know, like this guy should have a freaking big ass look at some blizzard stuff right uh, unless this is a female character this could be a female in armor with the narrower shoulders if you look at like diablo the women always have narrower shoulder pauldrons right to show the, the feminine form um yeah this gives it definitely more masculine but then we're losing the arms a little bit you just beef it up and make the arms bigger yeah. <laughs> that's what i would do and make the bring the head up a little bit bring a bit more of the neck because the head is kind of yeah hugging the, it's hugging the the chest a little bit too close there you go. Sur doing surgery on on the image. <laughs> you gotta love you gotta love digital media for that. Yeah, you know, just this just was traditional. It would take you three days to take this. And then you know, underneath it, you could, you know, take the arm, again creating a tangent there. And you want to, you could move that ultimately down a little more like that, and then have it well, just have it overlapping the, uh, you know, the back wing more, and then. Yeah fixing that arrangement but yeah overall it's a very strong image definitely one of the strongest this i would like to see a little this is great because it's it's there and it's glowing but it, we're losing some of the darker tones in terms of contrast on it yeah and this is beautifully rendered by the way yeah. i love that scepter um yeah but take that and done. let's see if a quick then we'll go um no nope, not that way you know adding the punch to it yeah, there you go. Big difference, right? Very nice, yeah. But great job, dude. Beautifully done. Oh, unfortunately. All right. We're back here. Um, we're on uh, Kevin's piece. Kevin, yes. And as a side note, and as a first note on this, from now on, for everyone that's seen this video, and I'm sure it's going to take a couple a, a couple brush sauce uh, it, 
brush sauces to get across, but I want everybody to do this from now on. Let's see your sketches yeah. on the, somewhere attached to your main submission. Yeah. We could see how you planned it out and what was the development of it, and we could ultimately help you more. And as you can see, this is, I would, and Adam and I agree, this is definitely one of the strongest images, and it's yeah. definitely uh, like the most consistent and thought out. Why? Because he's probably he probably planned more than 90% of you. He planned okay. out the image. Yeah, he yeah. didn't take any shortcuts. And planning doesn't cost a lot of time. An hour, maybe, yeah. tops. And look what you can accomplish things a lot faster in the long run mm -hmm. and get better results. So it's a win-win situation for sure. So, yeah. <laughs> planning. Great, yeah. great thing. The drawing is good, so it's going to make a good painting. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, critique-wise, though, a little too heavy-handed in terms of blue. Yeah, I feel that too. It's yeah. overall like you could tone that down a bit. Like you know those uh, the jets, the blue jets are cool, but mm -hmm. against that strong blue sky, we're losing it. I would maybe even boost it up and make it more of a whiter. Or make them yellow, like the inside here. Yeah, the consistency. You can afford that with all the blues you've got in the scene, right? Yeah. Afford to bring in more. And warm. then again, this this works because it's a you know it's an analogous color scheme. You have yellow, blue, yeah. and green. Yeah. <laughs> a sure ticket to making a harmonized. A color palette but you know overall it's great you have scale you have yeah. the action um you have a setting it has all the ingredients and i really like it and it's very clear and i'm not questioning a single thing in the scene no, which no. is also really a good thing <laughs> no. yeah yeah it, it's it's it gets to the point very cleanly and doesn't show off it doesn't need to show off because the composition and the values are, are solid and that's really what sells the image before anything else. You know, like you got like a little flat in here, and you could just you know remedy that with like a slight bit of, you know, uh, atmosphere. Bringing my brush is like wigging out. See, it was like at one. And mm -hmm. it's, well, you know, I because I turned on the, the camera. Maybe that's what's slowing it down. But yeah, just bringing in a little of that. Yeah. Like you did back here, just to create a little bit more of that depth. Maybe connect this piece even to that. You know, just nitpicking this at this point because it's so, you know, well articulated. You know, on the left side, be careful with the tangents too. You got that little ship on the, on the furthest left that's hugging the cliff side. You've got the tree that's uh, the left side of the tree that you know the three green bushes. You've got a little bit kind of creating a tension with the uh, with the left the... side of the over here. Yeah, you see the the tree on the bottom left, the one with the three bushes on it. Yes. Uh, that one, the way it's hugging that dark gray cliff side. Yeah. Top of it. A little it's more like overlapping. Further up. See that? Yeah. And take that same tree, like, and definitely kind of repeat it on and throughout the scene. The yeah. similar tree, and it just sell the scale. Uh, but overall, great job. Yeah. Very nice. My brush is super laggy. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. Okay, who do we got next? We got Joel. Doodle dum. It's another very hardcore piece. A lot of movement in it. A lot of movement. A lot of contrast, too. Yeah. And to sum it up, what this is lacking is a solid value structure. Yeah. And I'm going to recommend to everybody, so I hope everyone's actually watching this particular critique, was which you can read a, for further reading, right? You can go to this site called Muddy Colors. Yeah. Um, and look up the composition basics of value structure. And here's the actual article that I mentioned in the very first episode of Brush Sauce Theater. Yeah. But, you know, it's a good read. It's not that long. And there's a few classic examples of how to value structure your painting so it reads very clearly. Yeah. Muddy Colors is great because it gets right to the point. There's yes. no, it's, it's simple point by point forms in very short articles. So it's, and it's stuff that you should really value. It's very really valuable information to value information. Yep. Yeah. Because, I mean, what we have here, again, it, it's good to have this, this kind of contrast in the monster, but then there, I did this on my earlier paintings too. There's also equal contrast in every other part of the scene. Whereas, like, yeah, that's black and it's making the ship read, but I you know we're, we're, there's like, at the same time, there's also a bit of a lack of atmosphere in it too. Yeah. Where, like, normally what you could do to kind of fix this maybe, or even push it, is just to get this on a level where it's all kind of mid tone, so actually removing a lot of the contrast in it yeah. and then you can go back oh not those sliders these add the contrast i mean but taking down the darks like that yeah. taking down the lights yeah you're, you're neutralizing the whole piece neutralize it and then you can go back okay so if this is the, the most important part you could take the you know this guy 
and then add the contrast back on him. Yeah, there you go. Again, my super awesome. I don't know how you do it, dude. Every time I, every, you make me cry every time. Look at that. It's so smooth and fluid. <laughs> and you sing with such a straight face, you know? That's what cracks me up. And then, see, then you can go back and, and yeah. get the contrast on this guy. Yeah. And now now he's reading. Again, if you wanted to, to bloom up the light like you had it, like you did, that's cool too and all. You know, getting in there and just, ah, my computer. See, it's, I shouldn't be doing the paint overs right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, just a little bit of light behind him. And get, but they, they give you opportunity to, to show the form you know, this will be an exaggerated um, way of that, but you know, wrap that light around, you know, all the form by kind of lighting it. Yeah, you don't want to ever, ever have to guess what's important and where to look. As an artist, especially when you're doing fantasy art, remember that you your image on Google is going to be one of ten thousand little thumbs. You want people to click on it fast. And people will not click on things they can't understand. They're going to click on things that they do. So that trading cards, anywhere, you know, video game, yep. whatever, it's always got to read real quick. So get right to the point. If your contrast is all over the place, people are going to take too long to read it. When they do that, they're not going to give it a chance. So you want to make sure people, you, you, don't, want to, you don't want to play games with people. Get right to the point and make it clear with your values. That's very, very important. And again, I think doing lots of thumbnails Nick, look at that. Yeah. Is is the way to fix this? Yeah. And I, I I posted a, a thing just on Facebook yesterday doing doing the same thing. It's like we need to just get the, the thumbnails down, um, right. as we just saw, and and that will really kind of help you figure out. Um, where the heck is it? Uh, myself, just I don't I don't think I posted it anywhere else because it was from Instagram. Instagrams, a, yeah, like these. So it's a picture of a picture. Not the clearest because I don't have it open right now, but just blocking things out and making sure they read. Yeah. Now the important thing is like I know I needed to show the boat. You put the contrast on the boat. Monster's almost going to be secondary in this, but still I have the second amount of contrast in and around him. Yeah. Various scenes. So you, you if you could figure out what you want to say, you know, a boat getting attacked by this monster, then you could do many different compositions and value plans of it to see what works the best mm -hmm. before we're committing. And these, these take, you know, like what, like five, 10 minutes max. And if you explore all the good ideas and all the bad ideas, look at how much you've solved in such a short period of time. Yes. yes. Yeah. And when you work fast in thumbs, it prevents you from getting caught up in silly, trivial details that aren't important. You get right to the point. And yep. that's, that's all that matters. Getting to the point is all that matters. After that, it's just fluff, right? So yeah, absolutely. All right. Anton bought the Drake foot. Nice. Look at the rendering on that. Wow. You get some nice rendering on this, man. Yeah, look at that. It's beautiful, beautiful harmony of colors, too, I must say. A nice, nice sense of color in there. That's beautiful. You know who you might want to look up, though? This is like a really kind of dramatic like scene, you know, two, two giant beings, you know, these yeah. wyverns, these dragons. They're about to confront each other, but like the, the lighting is also kind of not reflecting that. It's a little too happy, too to expect it almost like we have just like a, a simple bloom with like some blue i mean it's a nice harmony here but i think it's not quite as fitting for the moment you're trying to capture here it's definitely got an, a more youthful feel to it it's almost give it's always almost giving me a bit of a terry pratchett vibe yeah um which i love of course i'm a huge terry and i know toby's smiling and nodding as i'm saying that because mm -hmm. he's read them all but uh from a psychological level, yeah, if you're trying to do something hardcore, this the color scheme here is 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 youthful. If you are, however, doing pictures of dragons, which children love, uh, yes. then keep it as it is. You know, keep it as it is, but make sure that you're picking a side. You're not you're not playing the fence between the two. You don't want a, a vicious battle with soft with soft tones. You want to kind of stick everything within a certain theme, right? Yes. And yeah, just a great guy that you could reference in terms of the color, because you do get a little too saturated, uh, you know, saturation heavy in that. Is this guy called Chris Ron? Uh, he's pretty much, I believe, he paints traditionally now, but um, he does a lot of dra he's done a lot of dragon scenes, some beautiful <laughs> ones. But uh, he knows how to kind of capture a very kind of specific mood or, and feeling. Again, yeah. you know, something way more like subdued. 
would be like make a more powerful statement with yeah. you know this huge conflict that you're you're about to show yeah like notice how the colors the contrast all of that are very focused on the mood and the narrative of the piece there's, yeah, they reflect there's no confusion everything tells the same story color value composition scale yada 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 rendering they all tell the same story they're not mm -hmm. contradicting each other so it's something very important to pay attention to because we can get lost with that very often right that's beautiful yeah, that's beautiful too and loose too you look at this he has a this is very loose he just this, knows where to grab people right this is i would this is no more detailed than your scene no. not 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 by a long shot same amount of detail very kind of soft yeah. and, and implied but it's like yeah. it's putting the right color notes and cues with the right value attached to them can really um you know punch things forward yeah but it, I think it's the mood and just the gradation of this that's, you know, taking away from the piece for me. Like, yeah, if you look at his piece, the major thing, I, I think quality-wise, they hold up against each other side by side. In fact, I think I kind of like your colors more, to be honest with you. But yeah. there's a consistency with the theme. And make sure you do the same thing with Bruce, right? Be aware of that and make sure you're focused on that throughout the entire piece. Yeah, look at that. There, like, yeah, Magic the Gathering has so many sets of, like, you know, imagine if you're seeing that they're confronting each other. It's dark, it's stormy, you got the little birds, you know, yeah. you know, you could really play up this confrontation. Yeah. I just, and that, and that's the, the takeaway with this. I just think this moment is a bit undersold. Yeah. And lots of dra uh, drama going on here. Yeah. Oh, you got the little. I just noticed he did have the little birds in there too. Does he, oh, he does have the birds. I'm sorry, that's my bad. No, I didn't even. You said birds, so I looked for birds and I found them. But it's the con, again the contrast. Isn't again, it? if if you want to do like clouds opening above them to create contrast on the head, yeah. Uh, color yeah. palette wise, doing something more muted, you know, like this, it would probably be the way to create more drama with it. In Magic the Gathering. It's, it's cool that Tyler's showing you Magic the Gathering because there's a very common theme you're going to see in Magic the Gathering art: how they create a sense of depth. Notice how there's the the backgrounds are always really knocked back with contrast, like an overlay of blue or mm -hmm. teal or something like that, and the foreground has sharp contrast. You'll you'll see it everywhere. They yeah. all do it. Um, uh, and make sure you don't, for instance, if you look back at at, uh, at your image. You don't want beige on beige. You don't want blue on blue. You want to create a visual and tonal, tonal as in hue, contrast, yeah. right? So the fact that the head of that dragon has a backdrop of beige behind it, it's the, I'm talking about the beige dragon, mm -hmm. is it creates an awkward contrast you don't want, right? But overall, I like I like the composition and I like the moment you chose to depict. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, we have Mike K. Mike. I like this. This is different. You have. Yeah, look at that. Well, huh. the battle above. So yeah, there's a ship above the water, the surface. Get that? That makes sense now. That's oh, awesome. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Definitely playing. I like you got a corpse here with the blood. But again, what you're wanting to do, look, look up some undersea photography to, to, to get really get the depth going on in here yeah. and everything. This, this by the bottom gets completely flattened. Okay. Water... Water is very, you know, it's it's it bias. It, it's atmospheric because it's thick. It's yeah, it's yeah. a it's a substance. So lots of particles of that. There. A lot of particles coming in, yeah. and you can do it. You know, use that to to sell the uh... psychologically too. Okay, from the, in terms of colors, blue, just being blue. The color blue does not mean cold. It's the type of blue you're using. There's, this, there's warm blues, there's warm blues, there's cool blues, there's warm reds, there's cool reds. You can make red look like blue if you cool it off enough, right? And what's important is when you're doing something like this, this is probably out of all of the pieces we've seen, psychologically the most powerful piece. This is really, yeah, I like this. really psychologically strong, which I love about it. Um, uh, think of the psychology of color. It's blue, but it's a desaturated. There's depression. There's sadness. There's this, that, that's the power. Of I like this a lot, actually. Yeah, um, you know, you can you can in there. you can play with the psychology of color and saturation a lot. Look up color psychology on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find plenty of stuff out there, and see how you can use saturations and different tones of colors to create a very very uh, a mood that matches the subject. And, and the characters that you've painted there. Yeah. And that will really make people strong. It's still a little on the monochromatic side. So I was trying to add, punch in like a, you know, color, a few notes of green. 
Yeah. Into there. Yeah. Various places. You just want to look up murky underwater kind of photos. Yeah. yeah. Really sell. Like, okay, so we don't see anything here, right? But I, I could take this 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 kind of green kind of it, it looks green because of it, but it's so far into like the blue range. Yeah. That's what made it a pure green. So you're sticking within the same color color family, and you can subtly go in and around, you know, to detail a few kind of notes yeah. in terms of the details that we want to show here to to really flesh it out. And then then again, look up the color of like what you know blood looks like underwater I'm, i have no idea actually off the top of my head with no reference but uh, the surface of the water is up on the top left uh, top right if i'm not mistaken right yeah are you reading that right okay yeah the, the, the light the is going to travel through through the surface of the water unless she's under a boat mm -hmm. uh in which case not everything's going to be in shadow like that so you will have light hitting off the top of the head maybe leaving some of the yep. uh, the the refracted light from the waves on the top of the water so it's going to give you you can use that to create a sense of contrast and more drama to the face maybe catching up the forehead and the cheekbones to show that skeletal kind of dead face right yeah you see like you see light and light from the like picking up on even yeah the go. arms uh, it's it's really clear uh -huh. when you're close to the surface and there's you have photography on it like not do it evenly like i did but you yeah. will see lights hitting it but yeah and then even on the shark like I'm going to do this quick. Like, if we want to show part of the form on the shark, right? And then having some of that light on him. Let me see what brush. I know what brush I want. I know it's, okay, like something even like this. Like, showing part of the light hitting that shark in areas, you know? And then you just, it would require you to just blend it out. Because it's a, it's a form shadow, so it's going to be soft. It's, unless you have, like, if, unless it's overhead, and um, you have a cast shadow from like one of the eyes, and then you could totally bring that in a little, sh uh, a little sharper. Yeah, again, to, to, to illustrate, to clearly create a clear read, so people don't look at it and go, "What is that? A person? Is that a shark? Is that a piece of broken boat? Yeah. What is that?" People will be able to say, "Oh, wow, there's sharks floating around her." You don't want people to second guess you. Say it like it is, right? When you get into fine art stuff and you want to be more subtle with the narrative, then you can be more obscure. But in this particular case, there's you don't want to be too obscure to the another point. no name, it, right? Oh, okay. What's this? All right, pers very different from what we've been looking at. There's yeah. No so okay. again, let's let's take things a step back to thumbnail drawings, drawings in general. Um, don't. My personal recommendation would be to don't jump into the realm of color until you can make an image or a statement that works uh, with uh, you know with zero color. Right. But as you can see, if even taking the color away, it's still not working, and therefore color will never work until things are can or plan to work, you know, in terms of values, light and dark. Because like right now, this is I think okay, you got clouds. These are stormy clouds, and you have some kind of spaceship or space station, but you have like a space pod going to it, I guess, or it's yeah. I think just lots of research, reference, and thumbnails would be your best bet. Yeah, and you know what else, too? Um, this might help, actually, too, as well, is uh, think in forms. There's a bit of a... I can see where you got a little bit confused, is you're kind of mixing line art and form art together. So it kind of creates this... It kind of creates this... Is it 2D? Is it 3D? It's kind of hard to tell, right? But if you think just in forms or just in line, you can... Create a read, an overall read to your image that's consistent. We'll be able to tell what we're looking at. Yeah, this, that this is a bit of visual confusion. This there. is a very straight on 2D kind of graphic. Like if we're looking at the side of a box, it yeah. looks like yeah. this, right? And then this, you know, this now we're, we're beginning to introduce more form. We have yeah. like, you know, a cylinder if we're going to talk, you know, primitive shapes. Yeah. But it's it's like getting that consistent, you know, throughout the whole thing. And, you know, I'll, you know, if I asked you where the horizon line is in this or, you know, where the horizon would be, would you know that? That is the first thing you should always know. Like yeah, and yeah. that will dictate the perspective, you know, where, where you, even though you don't visually see a horizon line, there is a true horizon based off of our eye level looking at it. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, and also with, uh, the link that Tyler, I, you should probably link that in the uh, description. Yeah, the, 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 yes. Um, the, the Muddy Colors article on value structure, light, medium, dark, job done. 
But because it's all over the place, because there's so many values, our brain doesn't know where to look and when. It's a yep. bit confusing. So just stick to a very clean, simple, 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 simple elementary school Do color this. value scheme and you'll be good to go. If, yeah. you're, if you're working on your drawing and then adding value, do simple, simple sketches like this yeah. to make sure it reads well. If, okay. it, if it looks good like this, this rough, yeah. this tiny, then you know you're in the right direction. If you can't get something to work at a very basic level like this, don't go on yet. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Dark ship, dark building, light sky. Done. This is gray on gray on gray with a, with a hint of lighter gray. And we lose everything as a result of it. It's, yeah, exactly. it's so much, all that work, all that beautiful detail, but we lose so much of it because we, it's hard to read, right? So you, don't want, you want to make sure people can fully appreciate all the work you put into it. Another no name. This one's called Zero. Zero! Agent Zero. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, I, 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 I meant to name things, but I, I can't keep track of everything. So the quick solution is to not rely on me and just name them. <laughs> very, very old school, traditional D and D. This is the kind of stuff I, I saw in my in my in the book. You know, my dungeons, my AD. I like this. Book. Yeah, I love that. I, I just balls to the wall fantasy art. I love it. I love it. I like to see a little punch of this color though on the horizon though. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. You know, just a little bit. Tangents. Pay attention to tangents. They're all over the place in this piece. Look at the way the the. The right side of the wing, the little hand on the right side of the wing. That's all right. Let me let me circle the uh, tangents, Adam. Yeah. yeah. Top that right, was... top right. That hand touching the thing there with the cloud. Uh, we got another tangent with the wing on the smaller dragon in the background and the cloud, the edge of the cloud. Yep. This is okay. hugging each other. Yeah. Um, what else do we got? The tangent monster is out, folks. Yeah. The tangent monster is all up, all over this. Uh, the okay. rest of it's actually I don't. The bow, many. the the archer on the in the middle bottom, his bow is t is kind of creating a bit of attention with the. Uh, with yeah, the, see yeah. this guy for two reasons. We got the head touching the side of the wall here, and this bow is perfectly kind of mirroring that shape. Yeah, and this look would be the a bottom. The the right side of that bow is creating a tangent with the stone with the wall a little bit there. So if we just take this cool little archer dude, which I like, you, you did put a decent amount of time into him. Yeah. yeah. This guy needs to be bigger. Yeah. yeah. And moved. And he's, so in, he's so important. You need to beef him up. He just took yeah. his pills. Now he's a dragon, dragon slayer. Yeah, now he's in the moment. He's he's messing dudes up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could, you could take that so out of context if, 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 if those of you that have dirty minds like Adam and I. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I giggled. Right? I'm sorry. I didn't even realize I, I, I said I didn't even realize I said it like that until you giggled and I was like, Oh, I know what I just said. Oh, my mind was my mind was always ready for something in a <laughs> So yeah, we fixed that, you know, right by the horizon a bit. This is a little bit a little bit too much and a little it uh you need a a little bit of refinement in that, right? If we were looking at Chris Ron's fire again, or the magic of the gathering, anything when it, it dealt with flames, you know, or explosions, it, it is very, or this one in particular, another well, wall scene. Confided. You are giving yourself a good challenge with the flames though, right? You want to, yeah, don't just splash a bunch of orange in there on color dodge mode. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's great to kind of build a palette, but not direct enough to have control over you want to have control over these flames you know what i could i could really do illustrate well, depending on the, you can do more painterly opaque like more drier more traditional flames that you just paint using different colors but there's also when you're working in photoshop darken put up a really good article uh a video tutorial on his enlightening page you can go check it out which shows you a quick how to create blend modes to create fire it's not his particular invention but you oh. do for fire and magic effects as well fire and magic effects video there you go yeah yeah and that that is i believe you know uh let me get the color out so people can read and look up on it that's i think it's darkened with two a's right yeah look up him I think it's, his with... name's mike Lim. he has yeah. a good blog yeah. yeah and he's got a he's got he, in his tutorial section you'll see he's got a you'll have to go through like Seven, three page or something like that. But yeah. you should find it. It's uh. They're all this. Is, this is good. Have have this the fill light of the cooler sky coming in and accenting that, those Magic the Gathering looks images all look powerful because right they take an image like this and they accent the top forms. You know, yeah. this is a poor example, but like you have cooler light in the sky, you can accent that. With, yeah. Again, the top of the. That's, 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 that's a nice question. Nice but overall, great job though, and I like your kind of yeah. classical approach to this. Real, cl I love it. I love it. Fearless. Okay. okay. Ooh, check out what we've got here. Tapio Above. Uh, Tapio Sutinen. This is. Yeah, that's a, that's a, this is crazy. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. So is she like in a tree? Uh, a there's a talon on her. She's wrapped. It's kind of. I think. Well, indication number one. Not entirely clear what you painted. As as. As much that as could be a matter of just detail and clarity in general of what's happening. So, like, if this is water, you just want to push a few more details to make it look water. Or like, like these, like I think it is. Like, a, she's in a river going down in the trees. It's like out of that scene from the Good Dinosaur. Um, uh, but you want to clarify that that's water a bit more. It like this looks more of like a, a resting pond because there's no motion lines in it. Yeah. You wanna you wanna clear that up. Yeah, um, you see the, the same brown in her hair with the brown in the trees with the brown, yep. brown in the talons is making it very d difficult to distinguish one from the other, right? Well, I'm also confused about this as well. Is like, is her hair white wrapping around or is it all just this brown? Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. confused about what this is because it's... Plus the heavy use of texture too is kind of blending everything in with everything else. This is just, it's the brightest thing in the in this aspect in the painting so it's sticking out the most but i'm not in, entirely even sure what it is what i can see is though there's a nice use of reference in certain places like those ha that hand with the purple nail polish nice touch <laughs> My it, would definitely yeah. approve of that um but the, the, the fingers on it yeah it, there's just a consistency thing going on yeah but there's definitely a reference there i could like those hands yeah. look like you put some you you that th that hand. photo bashed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but the upper body maybe there's a bit of reference missing for the upper. yeah a little clarity up in here again we're missing it looks like we're missing a neck yeah and, and if those tree trunks are far away then we should get some atmospheric depth they should be cool down they should be lower yeah, contrast a little too warm and jumping up in our... it's it's hard to tell if we're close up or far away we never look at again look up atmospheric depth. And that should help you see, ah, if this is far away, you should have more, it should be foggier and a little bit cooled but off. But I, I, I really like your idea and your setup, though, like coming from the, you know, we actually see the monster's perspective, like yeah. first person. We see the talons, like, that's an interesting shot design. Yeah, yeah. It, it, really good energy. You know, don't lose that because that stuff translates really good into fantasy art. You know, that, that kind of energy is very... Uh, All right. Last <laughs> one. Last one. Holy smokes. We made it. Who's, who are we looking from at? From Rodney. Rodney H. Rodney H. Okay, awesome. Okay. I think, um, Ronnie H., what we have is this just off the. I like the composition. I like the setup that reads, but what it's not reading is the value structure, as we've talked about a lot this episode. Yeah. yeah. It's it's constant light and dark everywhere. If we were to duplicate this and desaturate it, that'll be a good test of like what's happening. See, there's like if we squint at that, if we make it really tiny, it's like contrast everywhere and we don't know what we're looking at anymore right we don't want to lose that if you took a frazetta and did the same thing with a frazetta you'd be able to read it as good as if it was this big and that's because of the value structure that's what's hugely important yeah like simple you can do a dark and brooding kind of sky too but simplify you know again some of the the, the statement is it so like think of it like this way is the sky going to be black is it going to be gray or is there going to be the lightest element and then the characters are going to be dark or are they going to be gray you could section off the painting and and break it into like you know a form like that basically mm -hmm. it's like again that, like i'm not sure what's happening right there but we'll take this because i really like the action and the moment you have here but what we have going on with this is it's just the values make it hard to read yeah yeah so let me just, I, I'm, I'm going to attempt this. I don't know if it's going to be a quick fix, but like, you know, just taking segments of it. And then, you know, if we remove the back, you yeah, know, the contrast, really, yeah. tone down the light. Beautiful, Beautiful clarity in there. Again, don't, 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 go, don't be intimidated by Tyler's selection skills. He is a professional. He's been doing this for a long time. So I like to select things. Yeah. He's a selector. That's, that's <laughs> I, there, in the comic book world, there's, there's, there, what is there? There's inkers, there's pencilers, there's colors. <laughs> in the digital world, we have someone like me. I'm a selector. A selector. All right. So, so, you know, don't, don't, don't expect to just jump into selection, selection that fast. And <laughs> the guy knows what he's doing. You know, I'm not a tracer. I'm an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> you know just softening things up yeah. and just bringing into that you know that contrast you know with the characters like see he's reading now yeah, yeah. but like the, i still the, like a lot of work needs to be done in here to get this character to really pop the way we want to and again that, and like we have yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. like we're juxtaposing like some of the detail in with this but you have the right idea like we want to simplify everything around this main character yeah yeah well, look! Look at all of those different, like all the, the beautiful design you have of these 
these kind of floating wings, almost like the Drenai, the Drenai type of thing where they have floating yeah. bits on their maces and stuff. It's beautiful design, but we're missing a lot of that. A because you 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 have that in front of a cliff. So it's dark against dark. You lose. Yeah, you know what makes this strong, Adam? That's the perfect thing. Is like just take the um, the cliff and like get rid of it. We don't need it. Yeah. You, like, and that's uh, the minimalist kind of approach to scene design is also a great way to approach. Keep removing things until it compromises the statement you were trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, right? If we 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 I don't know how this selection is actually going to play out, but right, if we take that and just fill it with the um, with what you had going on, you know, with the ground here, and you know, we're trying to just show that without that kind of cliff, because we don't need the cliff. It's yeah, about it's not it's not right. The painting is not about the cliff. It's about these two characters and their interaction. So uh -huh. if we can much more easily, as you can see, show that the characters there without this cliff, just get rid of it. Yeah. If, if, if then you can focus on the story. moment. Yeah. And the action happening up here. If you're if you're telling a story, you're gonna tell you're gonna tell people what's relevant to the story. But if there's you're not gonna break into a different story about something else for no reason. It's just gonna confuse people. It's the same thing with this. Say what needs to be said and leave out what doesn't. Right? Detail is not gonna help the piece just for the sake of being detailed. It's gotta aid the narrative. We already know it's a bear and we can see the ground, we can see the mountains in the background. That's all we need to know. Yeah. Look at that. And also be careful with the saturation monster too, right? Yes. You want to keep saturation where it's going to have the most impact. So, Adam and I have so, a, a unanimous decision on what our favorite one is. It's tough. It's, it's tough, man. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, I think I do, though. I think I do. Yeah. yeah. You go. You first. The, um, the battle <laughs> above here first. by Kevin. Yes. Yes, Wazink. absolutely. I totally agree. I ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Just oh, just in, for the sole reason that it's the most cohesive image in terms of yeah. finish, polish, and execution. There's yeah. it left Adam and I nothing to interpret. Real, I mean, there's ways to interpret things, but like, it's it's direct enough that it's selling the idea. Yeah, yeah. without question. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, really, I love the no bullshit approach. The story is told, and that's it. Once the story's told, you you close the book and you move on, and and it's well balanced in terms of. Temperatures, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit heavy on the blue. A little heavy on the blue, but, yeah, but, but, perfect, but, but and nicely yeah, rendered. Just, just rendered enough that, that we're satisfied, satisfied, but we're not overkilled with it, right? right. I think it's like, in, 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 in terms of like runner up, you know, I John's is also a great example that you know it does a lot of things right, more things right than not. Yeah, yeah and then and then we you know categorize something like this that has such a deep, rich narrative or captures the mood so much, like Anton's yeah, piece yeah. here. It's like. I love that, but it's just lacking that polish. Like, if this image, I could easily have picked this one if it was, you know, up to full level of polish and detail, yeah. just because of the narrative and the the, the 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 approach to like, you know, interpreting the theme. Just brilliant. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of nice things going on. With a lot of these. nice, pe you know, like even there, uh, there's so many nice things to say. Like Putman's beautiful rendering, and his painting. This this one again. Yeah, such uh, an this, epic this, idea. It's it's just refining it. You know, and this one, the color palettes and. And Putman's, as you mentioned. Imagine that in a book. Imagine Alyssa, Alyssa's uh, piece in a in a book. You know, that well, I would buy a book just because it had that illustration on the front of it. That's beautiful. You know, there's a lot of great stuff out there. Overall, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to be posting the next uh, challenge. You can vote on uh, you know a topic on the Brush Off yeah. Seder, So check that out. Yeah. I and we'll see you again in about another month. Beautiful work, everybody. Beautiful work, everyone. Take care. Take care. Okay.